I want to break down this match too. Mm-hmm. On the Royal Rumble card, as we mm-hmm. recap the Royal Rumble, tell me mm-hmm. your thoughts of the Bray Wyatt and L.A. Knight pitch black match. Oh, man. The better question is, what was that match? I'm still trying to think about what the hell happened. Because, like, every time I think about that match, I'm still pondering, like, bro, what did I see? Was I watching two men in a strip club? Was I (laughs) watching a terrible attempt at trying to sell some toys? I just don't know what I was looking at, dog. Then we have my man in bright neon banana yellow trunks. (laughs) I'm like, L.A. Knight. We didn't leave TNA for this. And then we have Bray Wyatt doing his worst Jeff Hardy impression. I'm just like, bro, I feel bad for everybody in the nosebleeds for having to see this. This is terrible. And then we had Uncle Howdy just show up randomly out of nowhere, unprovoked. You know, just popped up out of nowhere, you know, and just, you know, dropped the elbow, dropped and called it a day. And I'm just sitting here thinking to myself, we waited how many months for this man to get back in the ring? For this? Terrible. Two out of t- two stars out of ten, man. Give me give me my money back. I want a refund. I gotta say this, like, I don't know why they keep putting Bray Wyatt in so much weird matches. Like it's like when Undertaker had his moment, when Undertaker and his run, Kane and hit their run, like of course Undertaker and Kane had the buried alive matches, they had the Inferno matches, Hell in the Cell, all these different type of matches. But that that they didn't have those matches all the time. It's like every time I see Bray Wyatt, it can't just be a regular match no more. I'm like, it's wrestling at the end of the day. Like Bray has to be in some type of regular match. Like it doesn't have to be a pitch black freaking glow in a dark match. Like it don't have to be none of those type of themes sometimes. But the one thing I do got to say about this, I do like I did like the ending with Howdy jumping off the little stage thing because. It just it just showed me that it's there's a possibility that we can actually see those two team together. I'm trying to see who the heck is actually Howdy, like Bro, his. Tell me. It's Bo Dallas. But I'm like, they can't just have Howdy come out. This can't just be his only moments. Like he actually eventually is gonna have to wrestle a match, right? <laughs> like a regular, a real match. So you you might as well team him up with Bray Wyatt, and they might as well have like tag team matches or do something because i'm like his moment can't just be having these little freaking mind games and then he jumps off the freaking stage here and there it just can't be that all the time so i mean give it some time man we gotta you know, like we said with roman long-term booking we gotta wait for it to play out you can't jump off the ship yet we gotta sync with it <laughs> i believe in bray wyatt i actually like bray wyatt i feel like he's a pretty good character i'm just saying like Mm-hmm. It's just they gotta. I don't know. They gotta speed something up eventually. Like man, yeah. they keep doing these freaking mind games with freaking Alexa Bliss. I'm like, when is she gonna join the team? Speaking of that match, you know. Speaking of Alexa Bliss, what did you think of the Raw Women's Championship match with Bianca Belair and Alexa Bliss? That was so forgettable, dog. I forgot what happened. <laughs> it was crazy. I watched the Royal Rumble like at least about what I want to say about. Two two and a half hours ago, I didn't forgot what happened, dog. All I know is Bianca won, and then you know is some weird shit happened at the end with with Alexa Bliss. I, hey man, I I forgot, dog. You tell me. I'm gonna say this: Bianca Belair just looked like it was complete dominance. B- Bianca just looked like she wasn't supposed to lose, and uh, how aggressive she was in that match, it was complete dominance. Like to me, like it, it showed me that WWE doesn't plan on Bianca losing anytime soon, how she dominated Alexa. And then this kind of goes into perfectly with the freaking Rhea Ripley who won the Raw Women's uh, Royal Rumble, and she's actually choosing to face Charlotte Flair. Side note, wait, wait, wait. You telling me you think the WWE would would make the black champion lose a, a day before Black History Month? Oh, I didn't even think about that. I yeah, didn't even yeah, think yeah. about that. Would have been that. a media hell star, dog. You would, that's not good for business, dog. That's why she had a little pep in her step. She had an extra pep in her step. She was throwing haymakers out there on Alexa. <laughs> I was like, Alexa, there's no way Alexa can win this match. Oh no, nah, man. <laughs> she had to. She had the job out that time. You ain't winning this on your best day. Oh no, man. man. 
I don't think you remember, but uh, if I'm not mistaken, Rhea Ripley got folded by uh by Charlotte when she came down to NXT to go take her belt. I mm-hmm. remember that. Yeah, yeah, I do remember. So that. it makes sense why Rhea wants that salty run back, the extra salty run back, saltier than some McDonald's French fries, salty. Like, yeah, don't think I forgot. <laughs> I think it actually makes sense, though. Like, at first, initially, I was like, wait, what the heck? Everybody everybody thought this was pretty easy. You put Rhea Ripley against Bianca Belair. It's like, it's magic. She won the World Rumble. It's easy. They both on Monday Night Raw. But then I started to think about it, and I was like, it actually does make sense for her to face Charlotte. Because at the end of the day, as Bianca Belair... You know, she's been at the top of her game and she's going to continue to extend. Rhea Ripley is still extending. Um, You still want to kind of keep that dream match from happening so soon. I can understand why that. You kind of want to still let them build each other up some more. And then eventually, when people are really, really wanting to see it, then it's like now we will give it when Rhea Ripley is kind of on that same level in terms of star power with Bianca. You don't want to just keep on giving us these dream matches too soon. So I see why yeah. they kind of delayed that. And it's like, let's let's have her face Charlotte. Well, we could have like a, a unifying match because later on at SummerSlam. Mm. Well, that could be a thing. Um, One way I like to look at it is like this. The scenario, I like the well, one thing I want to say, well, since we're talking about the Royal Rumble, I do want to talk about the storyline that went in because the Royal the Royal Rumble for the women's I say was better because at the end it started getting better and more fast paced and there were a lot more better uh story elements to it because I like Bailey and her group but let's just focus on um Rhea, Rhea. Mm-hmm. and I like how Rhea and uh Liv Morgan lasted till the end I thought that was really good and then on top of that I do like how Oscar's involvement came in as well and I think if there ever was somebody to go after um Bianca Belair, I think it would be a heel uh, Oscar. Mm. Yeah. And on top of that, the reason why I think Rhea wouldn't, in storyline, wouldn't go after Bianca because she's already beaten Bianca. There's not really much of a point. So I think she would most likely want to go after Charlotte because, hey, like I said, she got folded. (laughs) Now they got to run it back. Yeah, that makes sense. And it's like, I think um, Rhea Ripley and Bianca Belair is technically is like going to be two stars in the making, so you kind of want you kind of want to split them up from each other as long as you can until you can build towards that match when they're at their top of their game, like fully like in their the prime. Yeah, you want to keep you, them separated. Exactly, you want to keep that separated until it's the right time and it's built up so much. That is like now we really got to see that match. The fans can't control it. They they really want to see that match. So I'm like, Rhea, eventually she beat Charlotte. She becomes SmackDown Women's Champion. She dominates on SmackDown. Bianca continues to dominate on Raw. And then eventually down the line, they will face each other. So I see why they would do that. That makes sense. So Yeah. And, I, and I, I'm kind of cool with Bianca being champion for so long because – titles have been, if you i don't know if anybody's noticed they've been getting kind of thrown around from person to person it's been the same four faces so i'm glad that bianca's held the title around for so long because she's the only fresh face we've gotten with those belts and she's kind of like one of the only few people we view as viable to have it on her hmm. so i think uh what wwe is doing with her and rip Rhea are it's a very good job i actually think uh bianca versus oscar i didn't really give that too much of a thought until you said it I think that would be a good match. That probably yeah. that may very well be the WrestleMania match <laughs> for mm-hmm. Bianca. Um, cause I was thinking, I was like, after Rhea chose to face Charlotte, or I'm like, who would you who who's gonna face Bianca? Yeah. Asuka's a valuable, yeah, she's definitely a valuable pick. Because Shayna Baszler ain't got the star power right now. And um I don't wanna see <laughs> um I don't want to see old girls show up and face her. I think that match wouldn't be good. Um, Ronda Rousey, I don't want to see that. Oh, wait. That may still be a vi- That may actually happen. Remember I said that? I thought I thought that was a, possibly a good opportunity that Ronda, if she did win the Rumble, they would go with that. But guess what? She didn't win, 
And then Rhea wins. She chooses to face Charlotte. That may actually be the match. Watch Ronda end up in that Elimination Chamber match. Watch. <laughs> Let's see. Well, and to face I just think they need to move Ronda and, and, uh, and Shayna to the tag team division. Just just let them do that for a bit. I don't want to see Ronda near the title again, dog. I think I you, don't want to see that happen, dog. Until you, she gets Stephen A. Smith as a manager, I don't want to see her talk again, dog. Until she gets Stephen A. No, she need to get freaking Paul Heyman as a manager. That's who nah, she nah, needs. Nah, 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 nah. He's loyal to the bloodline. We gotta. We can't be just using that up right now, dog. Man, he is loyal, but the the bloodline may be disbanding. Speaking of that, let's actually talk about. Let's fully break that down. Tell me your thoughts on the match with Roman Reigns and Kevin Owens. And the cinema afterwards. This, oh man, I thought this match was pretty average and pretty like lackluster for me. Then seeing Kevin Owens botch is actually kind of heartbreaking because he never botched. He botched that that match. Remember he was in the turnbuckle, he slipped and he had to run it back again in the corner. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I was like, this is a uh, mediocre to say the least. But I will say this, that the whole thing before and after is what saves this Royal Rumble from being a very mid-tier, mid-pay-per-view, man. Because it's like, bro, I really wasn't, I was really bored watching this, keep it a buck with you. I didn't care what happened in the Royal Rumble, man. Either one of them. So, top of that, it don't help that this Royal Rumble was mad predictable as well. So, to give me that match and its ending, Cinema. Right there, cinema. Do you think it was too soon that they broke that they uh, had Sammy turn on Roman? Nope. Perfect. Perfect time to do it. Because now we get somebody Roman to squash in between the time of him for him to get to Ray WrestleMania. Huh. Man, it just okay. Initially, even though it's amazing cinema. It was absolutely amazing. The best part of the Royal Rumble. Initially, I was like, this is, may have been just a little too soon. Because, obviously, Roman is facing Cody Rhodes at WrestleMania. I just didn't think you did all of this with Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn becomes this freaking hot baby face right now just to see him get squashed by Roman. I don't think that's... I don't think that... All these months of him being a part of the bloodline, I don't think that would make any sense to me. Um, so something has to happen out of this. Sammy turning on Roman, Sammy has to become something big from this. I don't know what they got to like. To me, putting him against Roman, I don't think that's the right thing. I don't think because obviously he's going to lose to Roman. So I don't think that's the the right thing to do. Don't tell me you're one of those people that want to see Sami Zayn as champion. Don't tell me that. Though. It, it but it's it only makes sense that he that something great needs to happen like that because it's like all these months he's been a freaking part of the bloodline. Sami Zayn's stock goes freaking all the way to the top, and then we just have him get squashed by Roman. It'll be like, what's the point? What was the whole point? Because first of all, we already know that. Sammy's a tier two kind of guy. He's not a tier one kind of guy. And on top of that, we I've always known about the way Sammy's character is built up. If he can't get past Drew McIntyre, what makes you think he's getting past Roman? Nah, that's what I'm saying. That's why I don't think they should do that match because I'm like, if you do that match, you know Roman is gonna um you know Roman is gonna win. So Roman likes a fresh laundry? Yeah. Let it happen. How's this any different from the last couple times? Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, but at the same time, I, I don't know. For some reason, I think of Daniel Bryan. I think of Daniel Bryan. I think of Kofi Kingston when they had their freaking magical run. I just felt like that's the storyline that they was kind of building up with Sammy. So I'm like, the fact that Sammy, that's why I'm like, to me, Sammy's like a star right now in the WWE so I'm like you you can't have him get squashed by Roman if you have him you just kind of gotta I don't know what they gotta they gotta just kind of I don't know what to do with that I actually have no idea what they're gonna do with that Sammy is just the flavor of the month hey man come on now man get your clarity dog drink some water man go outside get some fresh air y'all need help yes you ain't the first person to say this I say y'all all need help <laughs> Sammy doesn't have to win he doesn't have to beat Roman but 
you can't have him get squashed by Roman. Oh, I want I want that squash. I want I want the cinema. You got to have him to me. Maybe maybe just Sammy and Kevin Owens. They go after the Usos, even though we don't know what Jay is about to do still. But you have Sammy and Kevin Owens go against the Usos, become the tag team champions. That's the best I can kind of see from this now. But it's like, yeah, because you to me, I don't believe Sammy could beat Roman. <laughs> I don't believe it wouldn't be believable. So speaking of the Usos, we gotta give uh, that boy Jay best supporting actor. Man, for sure. I'm like, man, his acting actually looks real. Like he be he be really into it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's so believable. So I'm I'm definitely on with that. Jay may dang near be a star to me. Like, do you think he can actually go on a solo run? I've been waiting for the Usos to go on separate ways just to see what they can do separately. Because I know they can talk. And I know they can wrestle. So, I think, hey, let's give it an experiment. Hey, man, I wouldn't have an issue if we separated the uh, the Street Profits as well. Man. Also, I feel like uh, Montez Ford need to cut somebody out. Him getting disrespected like that. Just coming in to get swiftly... Eliminated. Also hit Rogue getting swiftly eliminated from the uh, World Rumble. Matter of fact, the men didn't even get to go in the match. They, they, the female member did. She got eliminated the moment she got there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I remember. Yeah, I feel uh, we need to make some changes around here. Mm-hmm. But um, side note, though, to get back on track. um, I'm very curious because does that mean we get to see Roman in tag team matches or do we get to see um, Solo in in tag team matches? Mm. You know what I'd like to see? Like a handicap match. Roman in a handicap match. Against who? Roman in a handicap? Because I'm like... Yeah. I mean, we could throw him up against Alpha Academy or even uh, even the, uh, what's the call group? I forgot their name. God dang it. The Brawling Brutes. Like, I'm just saying, we could do that, man. Tell Roman steamroll a couple guys. Be like, man, I'm so good I can hold the belts by myself. Imagine Roman coming out with three belts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Comes out. I want to tag say, team and stuff. Yeah, yeah. What's up? I was gonna say eventually. I think they they need to split up the the championship belts though. I do think they need to split it up. It's coming, dog. It's coming. Right now, what we're doing is we're upping the value. We're building the stock on them belts again. Because, like I said, once we start letting clowns like Chris Jericho and Jack Swagger get them belts, hey man, they were pointless, dog. They were pointless. But I'm We're just right now. Yeah. I'm like, I'm just like, when do they do it though? Well, we could do, like I said, like like we talked about earlier last podcast, we could have him lose one belt one night and have him retain the other the next night. Or we could separate, we can make a new unified belt for the WWE World Heavyweight, any universal championship, right? Mm-hmm. And then we separate the tag team belts. Cause I feel like it is kind of um Scandalous to have the Usos hold on to them belts like that. I feel like that's kind of rough. Yeah, I definitely agree. That's why I'm like, you know, a while back when we were saying, I was like, both nights, Roman should defend the championship belts. I think this is what they should do now. Now knowing the finish of the Royal Rumble, obviously Cody Rhodes won. I do got something to say. I'm a, I got something more to say about the World Rumble, but I'm going to finish this point. I'm going to say this. I think Roman, if since it doesn't seem like he's about to face The Rock, The Rock is pretty much out of the equation, it seems like. I'll have Roman defend one of the championship belts against Cody, like the, un, like the Universal Championship belt, and then the WWE Championship belt, I will have him defend it against Sami Zayn. 
So like night one, Sammy versus Roman. Roman steamrolls Sammy. And then after that night two, he faces Cody, uh, and Cody. he faces Cody and loses. Yeah, I would like for The Rock to be involved in that WrestleMania and just to help cost Roman. Exactly. That's what I want to see too. <laughs> that like I get it, Rock. You can't wrestle. Hey man, cost somebody to match, dog. <laughs> yeah, that's why. Like to me. That actually kind of makes the most sense now because it's like it can literally end off the Sami Zayn being a part of the bloodline on the biggest stage. Like to me, the best storyline involves Sami Zayn. It can't just end like this. It should end like at a WrestleMania. Sami gets a shot. He loses, though. It's such a great match that we actually believe Sami's going to win at some points. Then he lose, though. (laughs) Night one. Night two. Roman is trying to defend the second belt. And then maybe The Rock comes out and then Cody ends up winning the Universal Championship and becomes the Raw Universal Champion to split up the championship belts too. Mm, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Well, well, only time can tell at this point. Yeah. And then it's like, what are the Usos and Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens going to do? It's a lot about to happen tomorrow, probably on SmackDown, if Roman and them show up. To kind of give us some answers of what's about to happen. I seen on IG freaking Sami Zayn posted a bunch of the bloodline stuff that he memorabilia and he put it next to like a trash can or something like that. To the curb. <laughs> oh man. So definitely uh definitely was uh interesting. I do gotta say this though. I gotta say this. I gotta finish this point with the Royal Rumble. I just don't understand if Cody Rose was gonna win the Royal Rumble, which I have no problem with. Why did y'all let us know he was actually going to be in the match like weeks ahead of time? If y'all was going to have no surprises, no The Rock, no Stone Cold. Oh, man, you didn't care about Booker T? (laughs) Oh, my God. Booker T looked like he barely can walk down that stage. (laughs) Them legs was too skinny. (laughs) (laughs) Them freaking legs was so skinny. I was like, his legs can't hold up his body no more. I was like, Booker got to stretch out. You got to stretch, Booker, every day. That As you get older, John, one thing I'm learning, and I just started practicing this week, make sure you stretch. Stretch on stretch every day, even on days you don't work out, stretch. And also on days you do work out, stretch before your workout and stretch after the workout. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Trust me, I learned, man. When I was hooping, I used to be like, God dang, back to back leg cramps. Oh yeah, I learned my lesson. Yeah, I stretch all the goddamn time. All the time. Yeah. It looked like Buck. Y'all needs also to stretch. didn't stretch though? Cody Rhodes. So you tore that pack. A bit of stretch. Stretch, foam roller, all that stuff. Booker looked like he hasn't stretched in some years. I, Booker need to stretch. But it was nice to see Booker T out there for about two seconds. <laughs> he lasted about all of two to ten seconds. So it was cool to see him. Um, one other thing I want to say about this Royal, uh, Royal Rumble, about the women's Royal Rumble match too. Nia Jax made her return. I was right. <laughs> I was right. <laughs> I didn't think Nia was gonna actually return. I actually thought that she was done. But uh nah nah nah. She actually returned. I don't know. It may be a one off though. She may just just have returned for the Royal Rumble though. I hope it is a one off though, because I still feel like they shouldn't have fired her and I still feel like with the all, all the information about what happened between her and Charlotte was not uncovered. And I feel like they fired her to protect Charlotte. And I feel like if that's the case, then it is what it is. Mm. Yeah. And personally, I don't want Nia Jax back. Not because I think she's a bad wrestler or anything like that. I'd just be like, hey, man, I, I think you served your purpose. They may throw Nia Jax with freaking Bianca Belair. You never know who's going to be these final little entrants in the in Elimination Chamber uh, match. So, and then the elimination beach, chamber beach, match to beach, be, the, yeah. Beach. Don't, don't, don't breathe that into existence. You may please see, stop. you may see Nia and Rhonda in that elimination. Please, chamber please stop match. in the name of the law. <laughs> God dang it. Whoever's going to be the number one contender to face Bianca Belair at WrestleMania. You may see Rhonda, Nanda, Nia Jackson there. You may see. Where do you get these ideas? Do you be, do you be daydreaming about this? Rhonda? 
I don't mind seeing Ronda face Bianca. Honestly, I do not mind. I don't because I don't know who WWE is going to book to win that match. I have no idea who they're going to book to win that. Bianca's freaking female John Cena right now. And Ronda is Ronda Rousey, who hasn't really took too many clean losses for, for a reason. So, like, I don't know who they will book to win that match. That's what makes me excited about that match. Hey, man, I know exactly how to do it. Roll up pin three seconds. Bianca wins. Gone. Roll up pin. If that, in, oh my God, I would literally, I'm, <laughs> I'm canceling my <laughs> subscription with Peacock. <laughs> I'm canceling. I, I'll be like, really? At WrestleMania, we got a roll up pin? Come on, yes. man. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. 